Hello everybody, welcome to this verbling class. My name is Teacher Amy and today's class is um, a bit of a fun class on time management. Um, I found this really fun article on psychologytoday.com about how animals spend their time. Um, so if you want to find out a little bit about the time management from a, an animal's perspective or how to balance or maybe not and we're going to be talking a few um here on verbally um, I'm going to share a couple of pages with you, and if you have never visited them before, or perhaps even if you have, but it was along those the And also book a lot with them so if you do want to attend any of their classes or a tutoring session then that's where you can go um, and if you're interested second link might be helpful and <clears throat> um, you can find the others too um, so if you are a Facebook person it might be Um, as you go through your week. So, that is Um, are you there? Ah, you're having problems hearing me. I wonder about the others. Let's see if Andre. Andre. Yes. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, but you're having problems hearing me. Mm, that's From a time to time, you are frozen. And oh. uh, you must hear a uh, kind of blur. Um, okay, that's a bit annoying. Um, maybe I will just see if I can leave the class and come back in. Um, just give me a couple of moments because I don't want to struggle through with that issue if it's annoying you. So I'll be right back, guys. Just see you in a couple of minutes. Was it the same for you guys? Or just for yeah. me? Yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, for, for me too. I oh, didn't okay. hear the, the, the teacher well. All right. Okay, we're hoping this has improved. Um, please let me know if, if you're still having problems hearing me. Um, I did try and restart everything this morning, so that's kind of annoying, but I've restarted my browser once again, and hopefully that will help. Anna, welcome. It's lovely to see you. It's lovely to see your teacher. I'm very <laughs> happy. Um, how, how have you been? Is your back better yet? Yes, I'm I'm very well now. However, the doctor gave me a day off to 
um, to July, August to 8th. Mm -hmm. So like I can stay home to there because they, they already gave me the permission. All right, so you get some time off work. Woohoo! You can come on to Verbling lots more often, Anna, and practice your English. <laughs> um, all right, so um, our topic today is time management, and we're just going to look at this from a bit of a general point of view for the for at uh, the beginning. Sorry. So, Anna, can you tell us what do you think about you with regards to time management? Are you are you good at organizing your time, or are you a bit hopeless? I. I didn't understand the adjective that she... Hopeless? Hopeless? Okay. <laughs> I'm not a good at it, unfortunately. I, I postpone things, I put off things that she, I am supposed to do to the last moment. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm not a good at it, no. I wish I, I was. But she, I when I... When I have to deliver something, and if we, I don't fulfill the deadline, uh, it can bring uh, some bad consequences. I, I fulfill the deadline. I, I found a way, you know. Even yeah. I can say that I have a, a way for, for my madness. <laughs> you found a method to your madness. Yes, I, yes, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, very honest of you to admit that, Anna. But you've kind of figured out a way to live with yourself and still meet deadlines that are necessary. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Great to have you in the class. <laughs> Welcome, um, Andre. How are you today? Hi, Amy. I'm doing good. How are you? Excellent, thank you. I'm doing really well as well. Um, tell us about you with time management. Is it an issue in your life? Do you have to keep to certain schedules for anything? Uh, I think I don't have issue at my work because uh, sometimes I have uh, kind of uh, to-do lists in my uh, Outlook or collect calendars calendars right yeah uh, in outlook and um, so I have no problems at my work but uh, uh, if we uh, see personally I don't actually <laughs> have um, I don't uh, do the time management for personal things just okay. to do lists maximum but uh, not every time and do you find that you end up with problematic situations in your personal life or does it seem to be okay? You know, I, I try to uh, do it more uh, strictly. Mm -hmm. How do you say? But, to be, uh, I, be more strict with myself uh, maybe? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, I try to be more strict uh, with myself but I uh, mentioned uh, that if I do um, too much to-do lists uh, not everything uh, in that list uh, will be done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you overestimate your abilities, then you just yeah. don't end up doing everything. I would, I would be disappointed, and you know, <laughs> so that's why maybe it's a wrong decision to not uh, make uh, it every time. But uh, at least I, don't, I'm not disappointed <laughs> every time. Yes. Good point, actually. I have a bad habit of doing the same thing, Andre. I write to-do lists that are so ridiculously long that there's never any chance of me completing all of them. Um, I do know some people, one of my friends, she actually writes a to-do list after she's already done some things, and then she can tick some stuff off straight away, <laughs> which she says <laughs> makes her feel really happy. <laughs> but I'm not quite sure about the... Maybe that's a little bit pointless, but not for her. <laughs> Maybe great. Right. Maybe great idea. <laughs> yeah, you should try it. <laughs> See if you get any satisfaction. Yeah. Um. All right. Great to have you. So we've had a couple of different insights so far from the A's of the class. Let's go to the J. Jose. Hello. Hello, Ami. How are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thanks for asking. Nice to see Great. you. 
Nice to see you. Um, tell us about you and your time, Jose. Yes, I try the setting, make a list and setting up uh, priorities because I think uh, some things uh, are more important than another one. Okay. And I, I try carrying out activity around these priorities. Uh, the the activities that, uh, that uh, are ma more important, I I I I, I think uh, I have to, to do to do more early than the another one. Mm -hmm. To 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 give them more energy or to spend more energy on them, Jose. Yes, yes, I spend more energy in in these activities. Uh, and I, I try to make a schedule uh, in order to, to, to make the activities in the proper way. Okay, so you make an effort to prioritize your different yes. to-do list items. So how does it work? Yes. Does it work well, do you think? Yes, I think uh, um, this method uh, works uh, well. All right. And um, what about your low priority activities? Do you ever actually get around to doing those? Yes, uh, the no priority activities uh, for me are uh, less important. Mm -hmm. I try to, to delay these kind of activities. Okay, so it doesn't matter if you really get them yes. done or not. All right. Yes. Awesome. Okay, three really different opinions so far. That's great. Um, welcome, Jose. Um, Ksenia, how about you? How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Have you been doing any cycling? How's the weather? Oh, it's pretty good, but I don't have time for cycling. Oh, have you been working too hard? Yes, working and walking with my husband. Walking with your husband? Working and walking, yes, with my <laughs> husband. Okay, um, that's nice. So, where do you walk? Just around your... Area or oh, the city. Anywhere? Yes, in the center. That's nice. Is it a nice air? Like, is your city nice to walk through? Is it kind of interesting or mm. busy or? No, you should have a look vision because there are no lamps in the night and a very bad pavement. So you should watch your step, every step, mm -hmm. and. Be careful with stray dogs because they're very aggressive. So it's not very. Uh, that safe. sounds horrible. It sounds like something was wrong with you, Xenia. So the first few nights, the pavement's terrible, and stray dogs are coming at you from all angles. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but you can burn a lot of calories in this situation. <laughs> and if you take your husband with you, then he can protect you from all of the dangers, right? Yes, of course. <laughs> All right. Well, that does sound at least interesting. Um, I'm glad you've been getting some exercise, even if you haven't been on your bike. Um, tell us about time management. Do you think of this as an issue, time management? For me, not, because I'm very, uh, I'm very reliable person. I think because I plan everything. I plan uh, what I want to eat on the next day. Mm -hmm. So. I planned everything and I don't fall asleep when I don't know what I'm going to do on the next day. So okay. it's impossible for me. <laughs> okay, interesting. So you are the type of person who always gets your meat out of the freezer in time for it to, to defrost overnight. Yes. <laughs> I am so impressed with that, Ksenia. <laughs> I never remember. Um, all right, so that's great. So you make a little plan maybe for your, the following day before you go to bed? In my mind only, yes. In your mind, okay. So you don't actually write any to-do lists as such? No, I um, use a notebook and paper only for my job to okay. make an appointment, but not my daily plans. Every day. Okay, and how does your husband feel about that? Does he enjoy your organized nature or does he find it a bit constricting? What kind of personality is he? I think he is the same. He's the but same? Not so, um, but not so, how to say, strict because yeah. I'm, because I can um, make, I don't know, I make action in a bad way when something is not going well. 
Ah. But he is more calm in this case. So maybe he's got a slightly more laid back attitude, although he still has the same ideas about organizing time as you. I think the same idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. All right, well, it sounds like that, that uh, is quite a compatible, compatible personalities, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so Ksenia is highly organized by the sound of things, so maybe we can get some tips off you, Ksenia, later on. We'll see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Natalia with the yellow flowers. Hello. Hello, hello. How nice to you? see you again. Oh, fine, thank you. What about you? Fine? Yes, I'm great, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, so, Natalia, are you a very organized person like Xenia? <laughs> well, so, uh, well, I was, when I was listening to Xenia, I thought that, uh, uh, so, well, to some extent, uh, I, I, I thought that maybe I'm an opposite uh, to Xenia, but, well, not 100 opposites. I mean that uh, suddenly uh, I'm a responsible person when it concerns my job, for example, my duties at, at work and so on, and the main things. But if you consider my housework, uh, uh, for instance, so tidying up the room and so on, so I can always <laughs> put it off and put it off, <laughs> and it takes so long time when I started, for instance, and and so sometimes there are also moments when um, I know that I have to prepare some, I don't know, some presentation or something, and I know that I will do it. I know that I will never let uh, anybody down uh, at work, for instance, but uh, uh, sometimes uh, I do it at the very last moment, and mm -hmm. sometimes it's quite effective for me, and so now I explain it by the fact that maybe I've got some adrenaline rush or something, and uh, it helps me <laughs> to work more yeah. effectively. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But actually, uh, I'm changing. Uh, so uh, earlier, I used to be more organized, uh, and, and now, well, there are things which uh, maybe I don't consider to be so important, uh, and uh, so I do them when when I have time. Okay. All right, so it sounds like you're a bit of a mixture, really, Natalia. It, um, sometimes at work, you you almost use a, a bit of adrenaline or a last minute activity or a deadline to help push you to, to achieve it, but at home maybe you're a bit more relaxed. Yeah, so <laughs> it sounds like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very interesting. Well, welcome to the class. Thank you. Um, Veronica, hello. Hello. How are you? I'm great, thanks. Excellent. Um, so I'm assuming that you've been following what we've been saying and talking all about time management and how we deal with time in our lives. So how do you feel about your life in general, Veronica? Do you have too many activities? Do you have not enough activities? Do you have optimal activities? Um, now it's holidays <laughs> and mm -hmm. these are the longest holidays in my life probably. Uh, because I've got five months uh, of holidays. Wow! It is, yeah, <laughs> after graduation uh, from high school in Poland, everybody has such long vacation. Mm -hmm. So, so for now, I have too little activities and too um, few. Too few. Uh, too few. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, it makes my time management <laughs> very difficult <laughs> because yeah. now I postpone everything. Like I have one little thing to do during the day mm -hmm. and I wake up and I think, oh, I'll sleep a little bit longer because I have time. So then I watch something because I have time and I end up doing nothing all day. <laughs> <laughs> so I found a job <laughs> to make it more organized, <laughs> to have something to do, uh -huh. to do other things. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Isn't it funny how um, you're in like the situation that probably some of us are all dreaming about, you know, having a big long holiday. 
But the reality of it is just as you say. I'm sure we'd all be the same, kind of a bit twiddling our thumbs, not really knowing what to do, spending most of the time sleeping and watching TV, which is really a complete waste of time. <laughs> um, yeah, believe me, a few months ago I was dreaming about it too. <laughs> and now you're completely over it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So what do you do at the end of this holiday, Veronica? Do you go to university? Yes. I'll um, study in English. <laughs> wonderful. So there you go. You can fill up your days with your, your new job and verbling classes. <laughs> I think I will have uh, too much English after <laughs> my studies. English overload. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, thank you for sharing that, Veronica. It's great to have you here because you're going to be like our balancing um, student today R to remind us that holiday is not always great, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Um, okay, you're the last student, I'm not entirely sure what your name is because it appears in maybe another language, possibly Arabic. I can't tell. Hello, anyway. Omar. Great. Hello, Omar. Hello. <laughs> nice to see you. Um, welcome to the class. How's everything going? How's your English studying going? It's going uh, good. I'm taking some class in uh, my day. Yep. I want, I want to increase my fluency in, the, in English. Well, you're in the right place, Omar. Excellent choice. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so Omar, tell us a little bit about you and time management. What do you do with your time? Are you good at organizing your time or are you hopeless? Unfortunately, I'm not organized. Uh, uh, we are on vacation in my country and uh, I'm not orga organized. Uh, Today it's different uh, from uh, uh, yesterday and before this, uh, yesterday. Uh, I have a new uh, uh, activity uh, always. I don't have work. I, I don't know what I can do in the vacation. Mm -hmm. I just waiting, uh, waiting university uh, for the uh, beginning. Yep, waiting we'll for university to start. You're yeah. like Veronica. Sorry? You're, you seem, it seems like you're in the same position as Veronica, who's also waiting for university to start. Yes, yes. All right, excellent. Well, we've got a male and a female balancing act. There we go. That should be very handy. Um, welcome to the class, Omar. We have an article which I'm going to direct you across to in a moment. But before we do that, I just want to ask, because this is like something that's very um, easy to do on verbally, um, and anyone can respond to this. Do you think that culture or a particular country, like where you're from, influences how you manage your time or whether or not you're an organized person? Um, does that have play a role? So we've got some Russians, we've got some Latin Americans. Omar, where are you from? Which country? I'm from Saudi Arabia. Okay, we've got a uh, Saudi Arabian, we've got a Pole. So what do you guys think? Does anyone want to respond? Do you think culture is something that definitely influences your idea of time management or is it more of a personal matter? It's in both. I think it's in a different in culture and in the country. I don't know. It's. I think the main. It's. it's I, the main things that will organize your uh, your life. It's uh, myself. I, you can organize. You can be unorganized. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I think you're right. It do, both things maybe do have an influence. Um, I think certain cultures, um, maybe this is because I'm looking, trying to look at my own culture, we're sort of stereotypically organized or not. Um, I don't know about you, but I think maybe we see, or in general people say, 
you know, Latin Americans are a bit more relaxed or maybe Hispanic people are a bit more laid back and they're often late or do things tomorrow or whatever. They have that manana kind of thing. Whereas in the UK or maybe Germany, maybe we're a bit more strict. Do you think that's actually true or is it just, you know, a stereotype? What, it's what not all true. Do you think it's true? It is true. <laughs> I know <Okay>. it's true. <laughs> Okay, so um, what would you say about your culture, Veronica? Um, we are very organized and we do a lot of things um, uh, very often at once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and uh, um, we really need to do something all the time. <laughs> and I've been to southern Spain. Mm -hmm. And um, if it was like I was there on holidays, it would be different for sure. But I was there on um, like kind of a camp, like a scouts camp. And yeah. uh, we um, in Poland, we always have lots of activities on such camps. And we went there and there was like nothing happened or uh, <laughs> one activity a day and yep. everything was just so disorganized <laughs> and we were for example at the pool and we were there three hours too early and it was 49 or something like that <laughs> degrees Celsius <laughs> and we were waiting there three hours uh, at the sun, <laughs> because they just didn't think about it to, to check. Uh, what time the pool um, opens. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's a very funny story, and it's a nice illustration. Thank you, Veronica. Um, was it Jose, I think, that was also wanting to say something? Um, in, in my culture here in Spain, I think the people is not so organized. Is is it disorganized? I think uh, the people don't don't make a setting of priorities. Yeah. In my country, no. And the the, the people is not uh, so organized. I think the people don't wake up uh, so early. After that, uh, they try to do activities, a lot of activities, but not in the proper way. Uh, don't make don't make the people don't make a list of priorities. Mm -hmm. if, when you do a list, you make a list of priorities. This activity is very important, but because because you you do you 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 give more importance uh, to the activities that for for you are more important. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, so Jose, you are confirming the Spanish stereo stereotype. Yes. <laughs> um, I just want to say hello to Adela and welcome. Adela, we've just been talking about how we manage our time and the most recent question was, do you think that culture plays a role in how you manage your time? Does your culture affect you and how well or not you do it? So that's what we're just discussing. Um, anyone else like to make a comment before we read? Hey, I. Okay. okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Anna. Okay. Uh, the Brazilian stereotype is not very good either, because we we have a bad thing that we are always late, you know, and it's true. It's true. <laughs> yes. Uh, it, it's customary to arrive late in a meeting at least 10 minutes, you know, and in fact, if you show up early, then earlier than everyone else, people would think it is weird or strange. In a party, it would be considered impolite, you know, if you show up before then everyone else, people would say, uh, oh my gosh, we are not uh, red, ready yet. What are you doing here? Something like that. 
Well, if I ever go to Brazil, I will have to remember that, Anna, because I think um, British people tend to be really, really, really on time. <laughs> no, um, don't be punctual in Paris in Brazil. Right. Okay, I'll write that on my list of remember things to remember. Um, okay, that's interesting. So let's let's go over to our article. Um, if you want to click on the link, it's there for you in the chat box. And if not, you can just share what we've got on my screen. So let's see if we can just zoom in a bit. Um, okay, so this is maybe presenting a slightly different point of view. We often do talk about time management. It's kind of one of those general, you know, how to manage your time effectively. Apparently you can't be a great human unless you are able to do that. But this article maybe presents it from a slightly different point of view. So, um, since Adele has just joined us, Adela, could you start us off and read the title and this little um, introductory sentence, please? Okay. Uh, what? Uh, why is the? Uh, what? Oh, why is it time to change uh, how you divide your time? It's not about balance. It's about doing what matters most. Great. Thank you. This is divide. Divide. Yes. Okay, so any questions firstly about the title? Or what Adela's just read? No. Brilliant. Okay, we're going to carry on. Adela, could you continue for us, please, in a podcast interview? Uh, in a podcast interview with with uh, host uh, Jody Arrigan, uh, on what's the point, Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson explained that trying to maintain our life balance uh, is overrated. Uh, I continue? Sorry? Yes, please. Yeah. Oh. Um, at first glance, it would appear that the astrophysic is suggesting we should uh, embrace a work alcoholic lifestyle because effort uh, to balance work with other interests and goals is uh, foolhardy. Great, thank you, Adela. This one here is overrated. Overrated. Correct. Okay, questions. Foolhardy. What is, what is foolhardy. That? Anyone? Could anyone explain what foolhardy means? Without thinking. Yeah, basically it, it means foolish, a foolish thing to do, a silly thing to do, without thinking, not very smart, that kind of thing. Any other questions? No? All right, in that case, Anna, please continue upon closer inspection. Okay. Upon closer inspection, however, what he stated is that you're doing lots of things, pursuing your goals and interests while developing or maintaining close relationships is well hard. Therefore, the out of balance feeling is to be expected from time to time and will compel you to create innovative solutions. He goes on to suggest that constant balance is not only unattainable, but in many ways unappealing. Thank you, Anna. Perfect reading. Any questions? Unattainable? Unattainable. What does unattainable mean? Unreachable. Yep. Thank you. Means unreachable, Anna. Not able to be reached. You can't actually achieve this thing. Um, any other questions? No? Brilliant. Okay. Andre, could you read the next paragraph and line, please? Okay. Uh, I agree with Tyson that a sense of balance is not desirable, but for different reasons. When something, anything, is in balance, it quite, it quite literally means that weight is distributed every evenly, or that all elements are in their correct proportions. Where 
When it comes to how we al allocate our time to the different aspects of our lives, I am not convinced that it's, it is balance we ought to be pursuing. Uh, instead, I think uh, we could benefit from seeking what is optimal. Great. Thank you. Perfect reading as well. Um, okay, any questions about Andre's paragraph? No? Nope. All right. Um, Natalia, what, could you just give us a little summary in your own words of what we've read so far? What are we talking about here? Are you there, Natalia? No. Nope. Oh, oh, sorry, yeah. sorry. So, <laughs> it was uh, unmuted, yeah. So, well, uh, actually, um, uh, here there is the point of view of uh, uh, Jody Evigron, who considers that uh, uh, um, balancing uh, our work and uh, our interests, our personal life uh, could be difficult, hard, unattainable, and even uh, unappealing. But uh, the, the author of the article um, says that uh, he partly agrees with it, but uh, partly disagrees, because uh, he thinks that um, Uh, well, okay. So he he says that uh, in our uh, uh, life we uh, shouldn't look for balance. Uh, so yeah. he says that uh, we should uh, benefit from seeking from what is optimal. Absolutely. Thank you. That's perfect, Natalia. Great summary. So we're just going to find out a tiny bit more about what he means by this. And we're going to see if Jose could read it. What's the difference? Okay, what's the difference? Unlike balance, optimal is that which is most favorable. In, term, in terms of how we spend our time, this translates into maximizing our actions given cer certain constraints. The biggest, limitation, the biggest limitation, whether you are a human or animal, there are only so many hours in the day to accomplish everything you need to do. Let's call this one time or activity budget. One of the most fundamental aspects of animal behavior is ex examining of how animals distribute their behavior and activities over time. Time devoted to one thing necessarily takes away from the time available for something else. Thus, understanding how an individual allocates time can give us insight into, into what is important to that individual. Excellent. That's a rather fitting paragraph for you, Jose, <laughs> about priorities. <laughs> um, yes. This one here is favorable. 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 Yep. And then this one you got right, but I'll just repeat it so you got it set in your brain. It's examining. Examining. Yep, and the last one is thus. Thus. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well done. Great reading. Anybody have any questions? No? Okay. So, we're going to find out what some animals do, how they spend their days, what percentage of time do they do, do they spend doing certain things. So, Ksenia, could you read about the thin-spined porcupine? Uh, for example, there is how the time budget of the thin-spined porcupine plays out. On any given day, the porcupine spends 74% of its active time resting, 14% feeding, 11% doing from one place to another, and 2% in miscellaneous activities. For orangutans, it can be more variable, but still they spend from 20 to 50 percent of their time during the day resting, from 30 to 50 percent feeding, and from 10 to 
20% traveling, and the remaining time is spent in assorted activities. Great, thank you, Ksenia. This one here doesn't have a C sound, a, a hard C, it just is miscellaneous. Miscellaneous. Yeah. Um, what does miscellaneous mean? Does anyone know? Other. Yeah, exactly. It's like when you have a certain number of categories and then there's still some things left over that don't actually fit into any of the categories, um, then you can call them miscellaneous. They're, they're things that don't really go with anything else, sort of random leftovers. Any other questions? Assorted activities. What is assorted activities? Not important. Anyone know? Just guess. Yes. No? Good guess, but no. So, different activities, various activities? Yeah. Um, exactly right, Natalia. You can, this word is used for when you've got like a variety of something. Um, and, you, for example, you could buy a packet of assorted sweets, and it means that there's different types of sweets inside the packet. So, it's like a variety or different, thing, different types of things. Ah, okay. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Um, all right, let's read this, this next paragraph. This is for Natalia, the first thing that jumps out. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, so the first, the first thing that jumps out is how both scenes paint porcupines and orangutans spend a good portion of their waking hours resting. But then again, unlike us, these two aren't the most social creatures. Great. And um, Veronica, we are first and foremost. We are first and foremost social animals. Our relationships with each other anchor us. They provide the foundation for us to go out into the world and succeed. And yet nurturing our relationship is one of the first things to fall by the wayside as we collectively complain, I'm too busy, I'm too tired, are we really or do we simply not know how to spend our time optimally? Before we look at how the average American allocates his or her time, let's glance at two other uh, widely different social species. Thank you, Veronica. This one here is Anka. 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 Great. Okay. Um, can anyone explain what it means here when it uses the word anchor? To anchor us. Bound us. Yes, that's a nice way of putting it, Cassidy. Yeah. So the anchor is that thing on a ship which is really, really heavy, and it stops your ship from moving around if you put it down into the into the water. Um, any other questions? No. Um, okay, I want to ask a question just before we carry on. It says here, you know, that one of the things that is first to fall by the wayside or to get left behind or to get um, neglected maybe is relationships. Um, so if you have a lot on your plate, if you've got a really busy day, then maybe your relationships are the things that suffer. Do you agree with this? What do you think? Is that true in your experience? It depends on what on what you do and uh, what okay. what is what what's on your plate. <laughs> so. Can you give us an example, Andre? For example, if someone uh, cares about his family or friends, uh, yeah. helps others. So I don't think I don't think that his relation or sh her relationship suffers. So mm -hmm. it depends. All right, maybe it also depends then on the person who you're having this relationship with. If they're very close to you, then maybe it doesn't suffer, but maybe a work colleague or something, that kind of relationship could suffer a bit. Yeah, yeah. It depends right. on the yeah. person, yeah. Thank you, Andre. Any other comments? No? All right, let's continue reading. So we've all had a turn. Would anyone like to read this paragraph for us? If you are a Daegu. Okay, may I? Yes. 
if you are a Deco, a small social rodent, rodent from South America, you live among others in colony, sort of like a neighborhood, and you belong to a social group or family. You have the added concern of becoming food for a suite of predators. Consequently, your day looks like this. Feeding, 46%. Watching out for danger, 32%. Resting, 8%. Traveling, 7%. Self-grooming, 4%. Burrow digging or home maintaining, 0.2%. And social interactions, 3%. Despite being social and living in groups, social activity is not uh, the top priority because so much of their day is spent looking for food and keeping eye out for danger. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Um, it should be keeping an eye, not and eye. Keeping an eye out for danger. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, well done. That was really lovely reading. Um, I was going to ask you if you know what this animal is, Anna. No, teacher, I was about to ask you. <laughs> well, I when I first read this, I hadn't actually come across one of these before. They look pretty cute, I must say. Um, but because they were from, a, well, very roughly South America, I thought maybe, you never know, you're Brazil, you might know. But no, perhaps they are uh, an animal that doesn't, you know, interact with humans ever. Maybe they live somewhere isolated. Um... Okay, so we'll read about baboons. Who would like to read this one? I can. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, Natalie, go on, go on. <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, so thank you. So not so not so for baboons. Even though they spend about twelve percent of their time watching for predators, uh, social interactions make up a whopping fifteen percent of their daily time budget, five times as much as the degu. Why? Because social relationships are incredibly important to an individual baboon's success. Apart from humans, baboons are one of the most successful primates on the planet. Yet uh, the one thing they don't cast aside is the importance of maintaining strong relationships with each other. What we do know is that uh, time spent in other activities takes a hit to compensate for all this togetherness. Thank you Natalia, beautiful reading. Anyone have any questions? Okay. Oh. Sorry, Anna. I Cast forgot aside, to... this here. Yeah. Yes. Ah, okay. To, to goes, it goes together with this other word, aside. To cast something aside. Can anyone explain that? So I suppose the uh, things they don't ignore, for example, yeah. they put aside. Exactly. Yep. It's like to put at the side, to ignore it, to put it away from like your main path. But because it's negative, it's the thing that they don't do this with, i.e. they do focus on it. <laughs> okay. Um, let's continue. So, Ksenia, would you like to read from comparative purposes? Mm -hmm, okay. For comparative purposes, let's broadly categorize everything but social interactions and daytime rest as work. How do we stack up? Subtracting seven hours for sleeping according to the American Time Use database, the average American spends uh, the the average American spends the remaining seventeen hours divided up roughly as follows: twenty four percent resting and eight percent socializing, communicating with uh, the balance and engaging in some version of work. Given, yeah. given the state of some of our relationship, it's possible most of us are not optimally managing our time. Thank you. One. Just stop there. We'll just check that if there's any questions. No. So we've got the um, the kind of analysis of the average American. So obviously none of us are American. 
but I'm sure that our percentages are not too far off this. Um, is anybody surprised by this, or do you feel it sounds quite accurate, or what do you think? No, uh, I am. I'm not uh, surprised. I think this kind of thinking uh, has similarities with project management. Mm -hmm. It is the same. Okay. In what because way, Jose? You, 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 uh, yeah, you have to to make an on a scope, and after that, you have to break up uh, the problem in a small steps. You mm -hmm. have to to establish uh, priorities. Yep. Absolutely. Are you a manager, Jose? No, but I, I, uh, I, uh, I take, uh, I took some classes of project management management with uh -huh. Adela and Anna. Too. Uh -huh. Awesome. Okay, so that's fascinating, and there's definitely one thing I'm going to remember from this class, and that is priorities, Jose. You have definitely got that into my head. So well done. <laughs> um. Okay, let's continue a little bit longer. Anyone else like to read? Okay. Thank you, Andre. One way. Okay. Uh, one way to get a handle of that where does all my time go uh, question is to conduct a little behavior study on yourself. Just as a food journal can help you lose weight and a money journal can help you manage your finances, Tracking your time is an effective way to explore how you really spend your waking hours. Uh, this can give you insight into whether the way you spend your time matches your priorities. There you go, Jose. We, this is a good way of identifying yeah. if your priorities are being met. Um, carry on, please, Andre, just for one more paragraph. Okay. Uh, if your partner or spouse constantly complains that you that you never spend enough time together, while well, you assert that uh, you simply do not have the time, this exercise may be particularly revealing. It may expose places where you can be more efficient with certain activities, thereby freeing up additional time to devote toward developing, deepening and maintaining your relationship. It has been estimated that the average American spends almost 20% of the day watching television. Excellent. Thank you, Andre. Any questions from those two paragraphs, guys? No? Okay. Last paragraph then. Anyone like to finish off this for us? Finish this off for us? Can I? I can. Okay. Um, Go. All right. Adela, I think that was. Thank you, Veronica. So Adela, could you read? The interesting thing about baboons is that they don't strive to balance their social time equally with everyone. Like us, their nurture and those relationships. Uh, that matter most to them. Thus, if you find yourself with someone and willing to dedicate time to you, or always putting other activities or people ahead of you, you may want to eliminate them from your activity budget and focus your time on more reciprocal, reciprocal relationship. After all, that will be optimal. <laughs> Thank you, Adela. Any questions on the last paragraph? Yeah. All right, so I think that, um, Jose, you know, what you've been saying from the beginning of this class has really matched what we've read in the article about priorities today. Um, and I like the way that it tells us how much time we waste watching TV. Um, interesting point. Just have a think about how much TV you watch. Is it, do you watch any TV at all? And do you think watching TV is a waste of time? Maybe they didn't say waste in the article. I think they just said spend, which is much more neutral. But is TV um, a good good use of your time? Do you find it helps you rest, or do you learn things from TV? Let's just have a quick um, discussion about TV before we finish. So does anyone here love TV? I cannot fall or sleep without TV. 
Okay, so it helps you relax, possibly, Anna? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I, I don't watch it, actually. <laughs> okay, yeah, Anna doesn't either. watch it. No, neither does in, Adela. In my, in my case, I don't, I don't have uh, time to watch the TV. <laughs> That's I, because you've got such I good priorities. I change for better blim. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Thank you, Adela. I, I, I spent a lot, a lot of time on Berlin. <laughs> now this is cheering me up, guys. What a great end to the class. <laughs> um, so if you're watching a lot of TV, the thing to do, really, according to this class, is come and, and join us on Berlin. Um I hope you've enjoyed reading about all these crazy animals and how they spend their time. I think it's been an interesting discussion today about how we all deal with this issue that we, you know, it's something that is the same for everybody, but we all deal with it in different ways. Um, so I hope you've maybe learned something. I certainly have. I'm going to think carefully about what I prioritize in my next week. Um, if you have decided to prioritize English learning and you want to practice your writing, then maybe you want to join me at the next class, which is um, a bit of fun practicing the conditional tenses. Um, but if not, if you want to prioritize relaxing or maybe watching some TV, um, then I hope to see you all again soon. Enjoy your evening or your day and have a great weekend. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 B